All right, so the article covered what we're looking for in the Cylinders Bible and why we are looking for it. So let's show you how to look into a Cylinders Bible to inspect for those items. I'm going to show you two methods that I know of. If, if you're familiar with one that I'm not going to cover today, please let me know because I'm always interested in learning new methods. But these two methods will serve you well. Uh, the first of which, not going to require any special tools uh, beyond what you've probably already got, uh, tweezers and a plug follower. Second method is going to require a specialized follower that you are going to have to purchase if you don't already have it. Not expensive, I think they're $25, $30. Um, but I'll show you both methods and you can decide what's best for you and what you want to use. I will say the first method, which just utilizes the follower and the cylinder tweezers, um, is going to be a little bit slower than the second method. Um, but with enough practice and enough usage, um, you can get the timing of both pretty close. Um, but with that said, I'll show you the first method. So I've got two cylinders here. Obviously, we're going to work through both of them. And I, I know already they've got master pins, and I did that on purpose to illustrate this. So we're going to take out the plug just as if we were re-keying the cylinder. Say we've set that to the side. Maybe we've already changed that the bottom pins, whatever. Um, we're going to take plug. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to be holding it in my right hand and the tweezers in my left, but if you're right-handed, vice versa, I do everything backwards. Uh, we're going to invert it upside down, just as if we were loading up top pins. Um, got the follower already in there. And then, very simply, we're going to remove the follower one chamber at a time to inspect. So, for example, we're going to go back to reveal the first chamber. Love that the phone's ringing. And we're going to allow the spring to press against that top pin to make sure there's no master pins, that it's the right top pin, and that the spring's working as it should be. This one kind of got away from me, so that happens during the process. Just reset it like you were doing a normal top pin loading. And I'm going to go through this kind of slow and uh, trust me, it's a lot faster than this once you do it. And of course, I'm having to angle it to make sure the lighting's uh, showing you the best way to do all this. Uh, but after we've searched and looked in the first chamber, very simply, we're just going to go back to the third. And I can see that there is a colored pin in there right now, uh, which, and as I lift it up, I can see there's a master pin. So very easily, what I'll do is I'll just bind against whatever pin, if it's a top pin, it's just going to push it away, which it already has. You can see it's kind of falling down in there. And then I'm going to press down on both of the top pins, both chambers that we've got uncovered. And then there's that master pin and I'll just dump it out. And we're going to do this one by one. And just as you load a cylinder with top pins and springs, we're going to do three from the front and then three from the back. That way we don't get carried away. And make it too difficult for ourselves and there's another top pin that just came out so there's two so very simply what I'll do is I'll just turn it around and now go back for the last three chambers on a five pin uh, on, on a cylinder keyed up to to five pins obviously you're gonna have an empty one in the six you see right here we've got a master pin so I'll push that off actually we got two master pins in that one Then we'll just carry on. Got a master pin in that one. And as the article says, I'm, I'm not only checking for master pins, obviously. I'm making sure that the right top pins are being used. I'm making sure that somebody has an inverted bottom pins. And, and I'm also checking to make sure that the spring's working. Um, and that's why we're holding it upside down because gravity's not able to pull those pins down. So we're really given the spring its money's worth to make sure it's working and I can just kind of let them press up and down and, and see that they're working and then as I go through it make sure everything's as it should be and then it's either been pinned or hasn't and you just reassemble go about your day dump these pins and you're good to go so that's one method that's the slow method um, you don't have to use tweezers for that I know a guy that uses a um, standard small flat tip screwdriver, almost like the giveaway ones they do. Um, here's a snap on 
uh, kind of give you a size comparison of what he does. And uh, I guess he feels that he can get better control over the pen with a larger flat surface. But uh, I've done that in a pinch too, and it works. Um, takes some getting used to, but he's been a locksmith probably as long as I've been alive. So who am I to question results? Um, second method. Not going to need follower for the tweezers. What we are going to need is what's known as a master follower. This is made by Keydex. Uh, very similar to a regular follower, except you can see it's not completely round on one side. Actually, for about half the length of the follower, it's got a cutout or it's recessed. And what that does, I will put the key in to show you. We're going to load with the cutaway or recess portion into the cylinder. I'm going to set the plug to the side. Very simply, what that allows the follower to do is it lets those top pins, master pins, all fall into the plug's hole more so than a normal follower. And as you can see right there, two have fallen out. But just to, just to check, we're going to clear the master pins first, so all we do is just rotate left and right. And there another one just fell out. Now, after we've cleared the top pins, or the master pins, excuse me, uh, we're going to check the top pins and the springs themselves, and we can do that. Uh, but going back, I have been able to remove top pin or master pins up to 0 .120 length, which is a 8 master pin for a Schlage. Uh, classic key bidding specification um, so you can get some pretty big pins out of here and, and rest assured that all the master pins are being removed um, so now that we've got the master pins out now all we've got to do and if your eyesight's not so good uh, you can always use a flashlight to help with this in fact I've got one right here um, but we can just simply look down And it's best, like I said, I'm not following my own rules. And I'm just trying to do this for show you the lighting sucks. But I can look in the first three very easily. And actually, if I hold it at an angle, not an angle to the camera, or beneficial to the camera, I can see that all six are actual top pins. And they've all got good spring resistance. So for demonstration purposes, that probably took 20, 30 seconds, maybe even a minute or longer. Real world, in the field, no more than 10 seconds, probably even quicker. I'm just rounding up to a number that sounds good. Um, but you can run through cylinders checking all these out and making sure that right top pins are being used, the springs are present, and they're working, they're not crushed, and you get all those master pins out of there. And not to stand on my soapbox again, but as I mentioned in the article, um, this is what a professional does. Uh, liability aside, all kinds of, of, of malfeasance aside, uh, professional does the right thing. They don't do the quick way or the easy way, and that's not to say that the professional way is always not going to be easy or quick, but they do it regardless to make sure that the work they're performing for the customer is the way it should be, the way the manufacturer specifies, or the way the product's designed to be used or maintained or serviced. Um, so this is going to add maybe, worst case, 10 seconds to each cylinder you rekey. But I tell you, and, and I even did the math in the article, it's a whole hell of a lot better than an hour-long callback. It's going to get you away from making money, and you're going to have to do something to repair a cylinder when you should have checked it to begin with. So that's quick. two quick ways to show you how to check a cylinder's Bible. Um, not much to them. In the example of the second one, you're going to need a special tool, but uh, I'm rambling at this point. So there you go. Checking a cylinder's Bible. Make sure you do it.